Oh. Sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. <laughs> and that's oh. still on. Crazy. Oh, I love the echo effect here. Okay. I wonder how this is going to work then. Ah, there we go. Hold on. Uh, mute. Yeah, figured it out. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so welcome to Friday Night Live. Yes, um, Booty Mashup presents Mashup Talk with Adriana A. That's me. This is Booty. This is Booty. Hold on, wait. Okay. Wow. I yeah. I don't even know. I'm. I. I only just now started drinking this. Okay. So don't. It's not like I've been day drinking, like everybody else on the Booty Mashup crew since. Uh, oh, what? Since last week? Last Saturday? Since last Wednesday? Oh my God. What a crazy 10 days we've had. Um, it's It's been every day waking up and checking my phone. And I'm like, okay, what fresh hell awaits. <laughs> you, know? Um, you know, and at first we found out that, um, you know, okay, so... Booty Mashup is, uh, as I'm sure you know, because otherwise you wouldn't even be watching or um, tuned into our channel, but um, we are first and foremost a party that uh, specializes in mashups. Mashups. If you don't know what a mashup is, I don't even know why you're watching this channel, but um, I will spell it out to you for the for the people just joining us. Um uh, or, you know, anyway, you should know this by now. It's 2020. Mashup culture is at least 20 years old at this point. But in case you don't know, a mashup is when you take two songs or more and you mash them together. And um, it creates uh, a beautiful new, um, you know, masterwork, uh, hopefully. I mean... Let's be honest, they're not all masterworks. <laughs> um, but, you know, the best mashups are often genre clashes. They, um, you know, take the vocals of one song, put it over the instrumentation of another. And the idea being that, um, you know, I think mashup culture started off as like, OMG, WTF, like, can't believe that someone did this. Um, and, you know, uh, it's mutated and changed over the years as far as like that oh my god what the fuck factor um people are now sort of used to it it's like oh you know like especially um you know uh every now and then a track goes a little viral people you know get really tuned into it and like yeah but i'm always always am surprised when people are still like hey what's a mashup and and they don't know um and that's what booty mashup has always been about um uh i you know honestly i had no idea where i was gonna go with any of this here i'm gonna show you my um that's my uh these are my set notes <laughs> i was like i got nothing i don't know i am just gonna go all i know is that at some point we have to skype call with dj and nate uh and do a little interview because he's our guest dj tonight um but yeah i'm gonna give you just a tiny little bit of history um uh, the way Booty Mashup started uh, was way back in 2003. And it, it, this is funny because in 2003, we felt that we were a little late to the game. Um, uh, mashup culture had already been, uh, been a thing, uh, especially in the UK. Uh, but it really came up with the advent of, um, of a couple things. Um, MP3s started becoming widely available and widely used and um you know people were sharing mp3s like crazy um and uh 
it, so that's what you know that's sort of like a lot of mashups you know they're just mp3s that people have created and they upload them and share them so this is we're talking the age of napster and limewire and acquisition and so many other um so many other those file sharing um you know music file sharing programs and then the second thing that happened around that time we're talking the early 2000s is uh, the advent of cheap and easy easy to use audio editing software things like sony acid and um you know ableton live and things like that where people were able to you know bedroom producers um, we're able to like just drop stuff in and chop it up and have tools, uh, studio tools um, that did not really exist easily and cheaply uh, for, you know, pro budding producers like they did before. So uh, it was sort of like this perfect storm of, um, of, of things that happened. And, you know, in the same way that remix culture became a thing in the 80s, um, you know, where like every, every, every artist seemed to have like extended remixes, dance remixes, that kind of thing. Same thing happened in the early 2000s with mashup culture. Um, but with one critical difference, <laughs> unlike remix culture, um, which was often, you know, pressed vinyl, uh, you know, provided for DJs and, uh, you know, were often like B-sides and uh, things like that. You know, you could buy them. You could buy like, you know, a single and it'd have like the 12-inch remix and other remixes. And they were like more officially done. Mashups were, um, let's just say, does the skull and crossbones in our logo mean anything to you? Totally bootleg, totally um, like illegal. And, and in fact, the reason um, that our party is called Booty is because of short for bootleg. Um, because when these uh, productions first started coming on, onto the scene, uh, they were called bootlegs, uh, the, the, especially in the UK community. They called them bootlegs because they were illegal, illegally made, Ill illegally produced, uh, illegally released. Um, and then uh, and then someone somewhere along the way came up with the term mashup. And you know how like pop culture goes. Um, things, you know, mutate and change and uh, mashup ultimately, especially in the U.S., became a little bit more of the the more popular term. But um, but, you know, we first discovered mashup culture in 2001. And so calling the party booty was very much um, a uh, like a tip of the hat to the the, the early the early 2000s, uh, the U.K. roots of the bootleg mashup scene. So um so yeah, it's um, and also I love that it's it's really a triple entendre. Um, we've got booty, which is short for bootleg. You've got booty as in shake your booty because we're ultimately throwing a party, and then we've got booty as in like pirate booty. I know it's spelled wrong, but um, but pirate booty, um, because these are all uh, first of all finding these things is so sometimes like finding buried treasure, and then secondly, you know, all the tracks are pirated, and and we've always been very adamant about pirates' honor um, at Booty Mashup. Uh, we uh, unlike. Unlike a lot of DJs and parties and clubs and stuff that, um, like, I just found this out recently. Um, I don't know how many DJs are, are in the chat right now. Um, taking a look. Oh, we got Pimp Daddy Supreme in the house. Um, I know we got DJ and Nate there because he's coming in later. But um, and Rhythm Scholar's there. Um, so white labels do you does anyone know what a white label is a white label is um like a bootleg remix or or you know uh illegally produced piece of vinyl um that often has like you know modified tracks from from artists uh so definitely you know and i thought that the reason they were called white labels uh i mean the reason is because there's it's literally just a white label like on on the record uh you don't know what's on it um until you play it um and and i thought that that was like a way to sort of like you know be able to sell it in record shops and things without necessarily getting in trouble uh you don't want um you know 
somebody, hey, what's, why is this, you know, insert artist here, you know, this is not an official remix and, you know, the names and credits and stuff like that. But um, so I thought it was because of that. But then some DJs many, many, many years later, they were like, oh, no, that's not why they're white labels. They're white labels. So when other DJs come up to check out your set and they look down trying to like, you know, train spot a little bit and nick your track. Hey, what is this cool track you got, bro? <laughs> you know, um, they can't they can't see what it is. So they can't go and 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 grab it for themselves. <sighs> Oh, DJ culture. Oh, DJ culture. I love it. I hate it. I love it. I hate it. I thought that was just like such the douchiest kind of reason. Um, I'm sure that there are white labels for both reasons. Um, but I do definitely believe this person when they're like, oh, yeah, DJs love the fact that, you know, other DJs can't come up and, and nick their track. That's never been our thing. We didn't pay for the copyright clearances. You know, neither should you. It's like sharing and is caring. We have always been about big upping bootleg mashup culture, like trying to make it a thing and um, and sharing the music as much as we can. And that's why we we have, um, you know, we, you know, our our uh, website right there, right there. Uh, our website right there has like just tons and tons and tons of free music really um uh like a zillion mashups every month we do a booty top 10 we do a, every year a best of booty mashup album um we do theme albums uh literally uh just um just put out a booty top 10 about to work on a Fleetwood mashed album. If you tuned in to our live stream on Wednesday, I did a little bit of a listening party of just like literally sitting here at my computer going through all the Fleetwood Mac mashups in my iTunes playlist and playing them and chatting about them and all that stuff. So uh, it's really, uh, um, we're, we're all about the music here. And um, it's, you know, the, the party, the party exists because of our love for music. And I could, I could say our love for mashups, but honestly, I think people who love mashups, people who produce them and listen to them and love them, they love mashups because they voraciously love music in all of its forms. Um, you know, it's, you know, uh, I mean, back in the day, I think this is much less so. And I think mashup culture over the past 20 years has helped facilitate this. But, you know, 20 years ago, you were very much defined, um, uh, like especially as a teenager, uh, culturally by what music you listened to. You know, were you like just a, um, you know, were you a pop kid? Were you just like, you know, the, you know, the basic cheerleader, you know, pop person you just like all oh, pop music you know or were you you know were you the goth kid who just listened to the dark gothy stuff were you the hip hop kids who were all about the rap and you know were you like the indie kids you know that kind of thing and um that's changed oh my god that is so changed um it with uh um i would say the tail end of millennials and definitely with gen z uh we live in an ipod shuffle culture and we have for for like at least the last 10 years and i love 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 it um of course the flip side <laughs> is it's made mashups a little less uh unique um uh, a little less, uh, a little less shocking. Um, there's much less OMG WTF these days. Um, back in 2001, 2002, 2003, when we started Booty, um, there was a lot of that. Um, so the reason, okay, I can't believe I'm somehow circling back to where I was. Uh, when we started Booty, um, it literally came down to the music. We were DJing sets. And, um, and you know, when I say we, uh, I need to, I need to clarify. It was both myself, Adriana A, and also, uh, my partner at the time, uh, Mysterious D. Um, and so the two of us had gotten like, we just started DJing my rock band had ended 
I was, you know, what do I do? I love music. Oh God. Oh my God. I did not want to become a DJ. It's like everybody's a DJ, but I became a DJ. Uh, literally it was like hanging out at our local gay bar and, um, putting songs into the jukebox. And the bartender was like, um, is this you guys putting all this music into the jukebox? And I'm like, yeah, this is, yeah, this is us. Um, and he was like, this is really good. This is like the best music we've heard in this bar in forever. Um, we got an open slot on Thursday. Do you want a DJ? I mean, of course we said yes. So I was like, sure. <laughs> you know, I had not DJed since like a college radio show. Um, and I had never like club or bar DJed. But, you know, of course we jumped in feet first and said, yeah. And um, the name of that, that bar night was Smashed. And we called it Smashed for two reasons. Number one, you definitely got smashed at this bar. <laughs> um, the bar, shout out to the Cinch on Polk Street in San Francisco, one of the last of the very old school uh, gay bars on Polk Street. In fact, I think it is the last. Um, Polk Street, before the Castro became the gayberhood, Polk Street was very much the gayberhood um, back in the, I guess, like 60s and 70s. And um, the cinch started off as a country western gay bar. It wasn't country western by the time we were going there, but you know, they kept the name and all the decor. It was like cheesy dive bar. I I love that place. Um and I really, really, really hope that they're going to survive all of the bar closures uh that have happened in the past week. Um it's been rough for so many of our colleagues in the nightlife and entertainment industry. Uh, we're all having a really, really rough time right now um, because this is, you know, performing and throwing parties and producing large gatherings of more than 10 people is our lifeblood. Um, uh, and so it's it's a rough time. So I have not, I have not, um, set up a Patreon or anything yet. There are other places out there that deserve your money more than Booty Mashup does right now. Um, so I want you to give money to like DNA Lounge, our venue in San Francisco and, you know, Hubba Hubba Review and The Monster Show and other of our performers and our, uh, um, our, our colleagues. Like, but check in with me again in two months and there might be like, Patreon! <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, so right around the same time that we started DJing, that's when we discovered mashup culture. Um, it was uh, uh, and it was like a revelation because everything that we were DJing was such a crazy mix. It was like you know a rock song, a pop song, a hip hop song, something throwback. Electro clash was happening at that time. Um, you know, like it was just really all over the map and mashups took everything we loved and put it all together like at the same time and it was it was just love at first listen I mean honestly it was love before I even heard it I literally read a little album review in entertainment weekly um oh my I think I might actually have this hold on a minute because I sometimes go on crazy eBay searches and I'm pretty sure uh, I have this handy. Hold on. It's over here somewhere. Pretty sure it's right here. I think it's here. I hope it's here. Wait, maybe it's in this one. Maybe it's in that one. Oh, I should have. See, like I said, I made, I made this stuff up as I went along. So I'm not really, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, oh my God, yes it is. I got it. Okay, I found it. <laughs> All right, so. Oh. How's it going, by the way? Is this, is this going well? Because I honestly, this, <laughs> this list of things to talk about was no joke. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Um, May 3rd, 2002. Entertainment Weekly. Look at that. Look at that. That's. That's, that's Joey. <laughs> Joey from Friends. <laughs> okay, so in here, in the music section, I, I used to read this magazine every week, hence Entertainment Weekly. So there is a little tiny, of course, they bury 
They bury the music reviews all the way in the back. Where the hell is it? Um, okay, of course I can't easily find it. I should have this like, um, I should have this uh, framed by now, but I don't. There it is. Okay, music. And yep, indeed. Okay, what do we got going on here? Oh, it's an article about fish. Mm -hmm, fish. There's, uh, yeah, yeah, that dude. Do we have any fish heads in the audience? Is that even what you call them? I don't know. I don't, fish is not my favorite. Uh, uh, Lane Staley, some, something about him. I don't know. Because uh, he was long dead by this point. So I'm guessing a, 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 a biography or something. Ha uh, ha! Here we go. Okay. You ready? Ready for some mashup history? Children. Okay. So right here. Get it up on the screen. There it is. It is a little sidebar. A little sidebar review um, of... The best bootlegs in the world ever. And uh, the subhead is file under bootlegs. And it's credited to various artists. Uh, and then it also says no label, right? So I'm like, well, what, what is this? So the best bootlegs in the world ever. So what sounds weirder? Salt and Peppa rapping Push It over the Stooges No Fun or TLC singing No Scrubs on top of the Human League's Being Boiled? Wipe those visions of musty dead concert tapes from your mind. Grateful Dead, Grateful Dead concert tapes. The new bootlegs are underground DJ remixes, often found on the internet, created by isolating the vocals of one song and pairing it with a seemingly incongru incongruous music track. That the songs merge seamlessly is both the result of an obsessive fan's trial and error and proof of your father's claim that all this noise sounds the same. This, no doubt illegitimate, disc compiles 17 of the subgenre's most ingenious hybrids, such as Christina Aguilera versus The Strokes and Destiny's Child versus The Dead Kennedys. The, um, the rowdiest sound clash by far is Smells Like Booty, wherein Beyonce and company, backed by Nirvana, offer a fresh kick to two songs everyone's sick of hearing. The party disc of the year, Bootlegs is guaranteed to have guests dancing slack-jawed, and they give it a B plus. So, I'm like, sign me up, right? Um, so I dug around the internet and I had to order this very bootleg CD from the UK um, from uh, uh, Rough Trade, actually, is uh, the record shop Rough Trade. Not even sure if they're still around. But um, so, uh, so yeah, I get it. And I to this day, I still don't know which one I put on first because I, I didn't just stick it on and hit play. Um, I, I stuck it on, and because there were two tracks I was just dying to hear, which are both name-dropped uh, in this little review. But, you know, the first one was the now seminal classic by Freelance Hellraiser, uh, Christina Aguilera and the Strokes, called Stroke of Genius, Genie in a Bottle, over hard to explain by the Strokes. And then the other one is Smells Like Booty, which is uh, um, Destiny's Child, over Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit, of course. Bootylicious, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Um, to this day, I don't remember which one I put on first, but I fell in love. It was just like, I mean, it was literally, you know, before that meme, that's what was happening. And um, and I was just like, yes, um, Mysterious D, we got to play this. Oh, my God. You know, um, we had a drunken, crazy, stupid bar night. This this was the kind of thing that was like perfect. And so that bar night then um, begat other DJ gigs. People, you know, liked the eclectic mixes that we were you know, showcasing. We, you know, we were great selectors. God, we did not really mix all that well. We, I mean, I don't think Mysterious Steve still mixes um, 
I mean, she, that's just not her forte. Um, I've gotten a little bit better at beat mixing, but, you know, oh, you know, what, almost 20 years into my career, and now I can finally beat mix? Uh, anyway. <laughs> but, you know, um, when you're doing this sort of eclectic mixing uh, of, of DJing, you don't really, it's not about, you know, it's about showcasing the tunes, which we were all about. But the problem was, it was so new. I mean, we're talking 2002 here, early 2002. No, well, this is May, May 2002. So um, uh, we, this would happen all the time at DJ gigs. You know, it's like, hey, hey, um, can you play the normal song? <laughs> I'm like, ah! So it was like, okay, why don't... Um, I'd already had a little taste of, um, of throwing... Um, my own party because when I was in a band um, sort of like a similar situation where you're like like an uh, we're like an island you know it's like there's like we're this this one thing amongst all this other stuff and no one else is really doing what we're doing where it was like a glam pop punk band so we literally put together our own party in order for us to be able to play at a gig that felt right for us as opposed to getting like booked with bands that really did not fit with us. So having some experience throwing uh, my own party with my band, it was like, okay, you know what? We need to, it's time. Actually, we had this idea for like, oh God, months and months and months and months uh, of like, let's throw a party that's just dedicated to mashups. But at that time, you know, there was a lot of crap. I mean, like, just because everyone can do it doesn't mean that everyone should. And it was, uh, there was, you know, some stuff that, you know, has not stood the test of time. Um, and, uh, and also at that time, it seemed like every other mashup was either Missy Elliott or Eminem. You know, I mean, rap music is, is the easiest thing to mash up and everybody did it and uh, I talked about this during my um, Fleetwood Mac listening party about like it's for a, a budding producer it's so much easier to work with a rap vocal because you don't need to worry about musical key it's very rhythmic so you you know it's much easier to you know to make sure that it, that it's in time with the beats uh, which is you know kind of critical um, I mean I, you can always tell DJs who are DJs, but not necessarily songwriters or producers because the song will be like totally in beat. You know, the vocal just like locks right in and it's completely and horribly out of key. And, and they, have, they have no idea because they don't hear musical key for some reason. I don't even know. I mean, it's like, I don't know how to write music, but I can hear when it's ook, as we say in the, um, in the mashup producer community, ook. And OOK stands for O O K out of key. Um, and yeah, it's frustrating. Anyway, so there was a lot of OOK mashups back in 2002. Um, but by 2003, by August 2003, it was like, it finally felt like, I think we've got enough to, th that we can do this. We can throw a party. And it was like, okay, let's, let's hype it up. This is a mashup party. Booty, short for bootleg, bootleg mashup. You know, and it was a Wednesday night at a tiny bar slash club that was a lesbian bar. Um, it was a, well, first it was a bike messenger bar, like kind of a total punk rock bike messenger bar. And then it got bought by a, a lesbian promoter uh, famous for doing things like Dinosaur Weekend, which is a big lesbian event down in Palm Springs. And, um, and so she was like, oh, let's, you know, I, I really want to do a seven night a week lesbian club. Um, I don't know what she was thinking. Um, I don't know how many queers we got in the house, but um, for all the straight people out there, let me tell you about lesbians going out to a nightclub. They go out once a year, maybe once every two years because they go out once, they meet their girlfriend, and then they U-Haul, <laughs> is what it's called. They basically move in the next week 
with their new girlfriend. You know, lesbian relationships happen so fast. Um, and so then they don't go out, they don't go out to a nightclub again. So um, this is such a phenomenon that there's literally a party here in San Francisco. It's a really fun lesbian dance party. And what's it called? It's called U-Haul. Um, so anyway, U-Hauling is that. So, you know, with that being a cliche in the lesbian community, there was no way she was going to be able to pull off um, seven nights a week uh, lesbian dance club. So we kind of came in and was like, hey, here you're looking for new parties that maybe aren't necessarily, you know, queer promoters, but not necessarily lesbian specific. And um, she was like, sure, let's do it. Here's a monthly Wednesday. <laughs> So we started on a monthly Wednesday. It was like maybe 50 people for the first one. And then the next month it was like 90 people and it slowly built up. We had a really bad December once where it was like less than 50 people. But just it's been a very, very slow growth to now the um, international club empire that finally got a Twitch channel. <laughs> All right, um, so that's like a brief history of what we're doing here, how, how we got from, from reading a, um, a tiny little review in Entertainment Weekly magazine back in 2002 to now this glorious Twitch channel uh, and our Friday Night Live and mashup talk. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, what the hell am I gonna talk about for an hour, Doug? <laughs> For those who don't know, DJ Time, aka Doug, uh, this was um, this was his idea when um, when shit started going down last week and we started we can't throw parties anymore. I mean, this is what we do. I mean, we throw parties dedicated to mashup culture, and we post mashups to our website. These are the only two things we do, really. You know, I I, I feel like we should have been on our social media game like. Years and years and years ago, we should have had a YouTube channel. Um, we should have, you know, our, our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter should have been like way more on lock. And it's it's not. It's like been, you know, when people don't realize this, throwing a party is actually a lot of work. So throwing parties every week in San Francisco, at the time every week in LA too, it's like our schedule switches. We're now twice a month there. Well, actually, no, we're, now we're zero a month. Um, but, you know, like, and then, you know, all the other parties in Seattle, New York, one offs all over the place, little tours, things. It's like you're so busy doing this stuff that you don't really have time to dedicate to that other stuff. And you don't make so much money that you can then, like, hire on a social media team, like some brand or something, you know? So we're really just, I mean, look. This is, we're, we're a kitchen table business. I just was, became acquainted with this term uh, just, just this past week because uh, a lot of kitchen table businesses are struggling because they're small. And yeah, it's like stuff happens at the kitchen table right here at this desk. So it's, uh, it's, it's everybody's struggling right now. Um, and I was super, super depressed. It was just like, Okay, wait, uh, parties are not, we're not allowed to do parties that are more than 250 people. Well, but everyone's kind of scared of coronavirus anyway, so we might not even get 250 people. Oh, and then the very next day, literally, it was like every morning, fresh hell. Oh, oh, now it's only 100 people. No, no events over 100 people. Oh, no events over 50 people. And then, you know, no events over 10. By this point, of course, DNA Lounge, uh, El Cid, uh, Rebar, these are three venues in San Francisco, LA, and Seattle that all had parties coming up um, in the immediate future. Everything, everything went bye bye, and so did, so did me. I went bye bye. I'm gonna go be depressed for a minute or two. I mean, it didn't help that my partner flew off to Berlin literally the day all this shit started going down. So that's always like. My mental health was not the best. <laughs> um, but I got to say, my team suddenly stepped up. Like, DJ Tripp was like, hey, we should be on Twitch. And uh, and then, you know, DJ Time's like, yeah, let's do Twitch. And I was like, and I'm just like, you know, I'm in bed, laptop, or on my phone. I'm just like, 
Here, let me just set up a, a booty mashup on Twitch. Okay, here's the logins. Just go. I don't even care. <laughs> you know? And then, you know, the trip starts like live streaming. Other people start live streaming. We were just like, oh my God, we're okay, fine. We're doing this. And after I had a couple days of just like freaking out, um, I kind of like woke up one morning and was like, Okay, this is what it is. I don't know when the next time is we're going to be able to throw a party. So this is what we're doing. We're, we're going to, let's do this. We're going to live stream. Uh, we're in Second Life again. I didn't even know Second Life is still a thing. I didn't even know Second Life still happens. But I uh, just got contacted by DJ Squirrel, a.k.a. DJ Haley. Um, and, uh, and she was like, hey, you want to? Actually, I don't know what she sounds like. I'm just making up voices. Um, but, you know, it all comes via email or Instagram messaging. Um, hey, uh, want to do a party in Second Life? I'm like, okay, this is freakishly good timing. Bad timing, but good timing for us to start moving um, our events since we can't do them IRL in real life. Let's do them online. So we're giving this Twitch thing a shot. And, um, all right, I'm getting messages. What's going on? We should tweet an Instagram on booty. Plug it. Yes. Yes, we should. Um, I'm not sure what that means. I tweet an Instagram on booty mashup all the time. But anyway, oh, wait a minute. I think I know what he means. Okay, wait, hold on. I got this rehearsed. I learned this from watching YouTube videos. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Hold on. Hey fam, welcome back to my channel. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Uh, it's all right here. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Booty Mashup. Like and follow. Uh, love you guys. You've really gotten me through like a really difficult time in my life. And I just love each and every one of you. Mwah, mwah. Oh, okay. Like and subscribe. Smash that like button. How'd I do? Did I pass the audition? I'm... Uh, I'm I'm ready to be a YouTuber influencer e-girl. <laughs> anyway, uh, I mean tweet that we are live. Bish, I'm like in the middle of 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 a of, of a live stream right now. I don't have time to tweet. I mean, what am I going to say? We're live. Live on Twitch. I did this already. I did this this afternoon. Uh, I don't have time for this. I don't have time. I need a team. I need a social media team. Screw it. Everyone gets a booty mashup login. You get a booty mashup login. You get a booty mashup login. We all get booty mashup logins. Go crazy. I'm kidding. Um, or am I? Who knows? I don't even know. Jesus Christ. You probably all think I'm drunk. Literally, this is like up to here. I've drank this much. This is just me. Uh, when I have an imaginary audience in a screen. That's, anyway. Y'all ready for an interview? Um, I mean, I'm realizing I didn't need to book an interview at all. I, it's, it's, I could, we got 20 minutes left in the show and I could keep going, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna, um, let's see if this works. This should be, this should be fun. Uh, let me put my headphones on so I can hear him. We have a special guest with us tonight. Uh, and by with us, I mean actually much further away because we're all self, uh, you know, self quarantining, uh, well, shelter in place. Some of you are probably self quarantining because you don't have shelter in place laws in effect yet, but ooh, mark my words, it's coming. Um, let's, uh, da, 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 where it calls? Let's, can we do this call? Uh, I think this, there we go. Is this working? No. Well, why you no call? New call. There we go. All right. We are trying this. Uh, wait. Call? Yes, video call on Skype. Do it. Okay. Why is someone not mashed up the Skype ringtone yet? There he is. Okay, hold on a minute. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I got you on my screen here. We need to do this. Bam. Oh, that's your name. And nope, that doesn't work. Damn it. There we go. Okay, let me make you smaller because you you too big. You're covering up my right, pretty, right. You're covering up my pretty face. Oh, there oh. we go. 
can't All be right. doing that. Can't be doing so, that. So, oh my God, you got the branding down. I, oh, I love you, Nathan. All right. <laughs> I inherited this flag. I inherited this some point. point uh, <laughs> some point. <laughs> and it's just been traveling around. With and it's just been traveling around. I, with me. It's uh, the first time I, I had a chance uh, to use it. Had a good chance oh, to use it. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> So um, thank you, DJ and Nate, for joining us here. Um, for those who don't know, uh, DJ and Nate is one of our resident DJs at, um, well, originally at Booty San Francisco. And then you moved to L.A. and you DJed some Booty L.A. parties. And now and then you were up near Seattle. So you did some Booty Seattles. And now where are you? Where are you, Nate? Uh, I'm in uh, Portland. I'm in, I'm in uh, Portland. Portland now. Oh, I'm in Portland now. I smell of booty, booty mashup Portland coming. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I may have thought about it. <laughs> I may have thought about it a few times. <laughs> 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 well, you know, like once all this, well, you know, like once is, all this, uh, who knows, is, who knows what will happen. Who knows, right? who knows you know, what will happen. But you know, I've been. Oh, we have a. Uh, oh, technical, we have a. Uh, no, 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 no. Issues. You keep talking. I'm issues. Just, I'm just rearranging stuff on my screen because I'll, because I can. It's I'll, like trying to figure out where to put your damn name. There we go. Right. Gotcha. There. Right. There. Gotcha. Oh, oh, yep. Oh, no. No. Gotcha. No. No. You're fine. There we go. <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. There we go. I think that's right. perfect. Okay. So um, you are our very first guest DJ on Friday Night Live. Yeah, I'm excited to, uh, yeah, I'm excited to, excited uh, to kick this off. Okay. Excited to kick this off. Um, um, I've got like, um, I've got like. Keep going. What do you got? Delay. Oh, there's a delay. delay. Oh, Oh yeah, it looked like you. Um, yeah, it looked we're like still you, talking. Um, you and I were still talking. All right. Anyway. All right. Anyway. Um, um, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, kind of. Yeah, I've been, been putting I together some uh, been putting together you know, some, some song uh, supplies, some mashup supplies, some mashup supplies, and mashup supply. um, and, um, and, and, and I'm excited to uh, excited to kind of. Uh, I went kind of like you know. I went through all of our like, booty you know, archives. All of our booty archives. I was looking for just. I was looking for just kind of just uh, you know kind of just upbeat, happy, you know, upbeat, happy um, kind of um, you know kind of get everyone's you know, minds off. Get everyone's minds off what's going on and just have a dance party. No, there's a lot of disco in so there. there's a lot of disco in there you know disco rock, 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 you know, dance disco rock, rock dance of course rock, i went and of course i went and pulled in my some of our pulled in my some of our some of the you know uh booty you know kind of staples booty, you know kind of staples uh, that we play uh, that a we lot play. And, and i also went back a lot and, and, and i also you know, went pulled back some of those old songs and, you know pulled some of those um, old songs that uh, um, used to get played a lot but used to get played a lot but you know haven't been played much haven't been played much in the for a while just the for a while just kind of give a just you know, kind of since, give a the first you know, time we're doing this the first time we're doing this to just try and keep like a just try and keep like a nice fun vibe through it all um and um and uh showcase some of the history kind of showcase some of the history of booty um while doing it that's great so you are definitely you're gonna dig deep you're gonna do some of the classics um, I, I love that. That's, mm -hmm. that's great for the mm -hmm. very first set that, uh, that, that you're doing. Now, um, you uh, used to be part of a, well, actually you still are, I believe, a production duo that was originally um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, DJ Time and Nathan Scott. And you guys put out several several mixtapes, and then you did a, uh, and then you had a little bit of a rebranding. Um, I I wouldn't know anything. That's right. That's right. A slight rebranding, <laughs> but um, you uh, then became innate. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not innate. You became end time, just just end time. And I remember I actually asked you guys if you could rebrand a little bit because putting um, DJ Time and Nathan Scott on the flyer. It's just like, you know, it's like way too long, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> that takes up the whole fire. And I was like, I was so sad. I wonder if it's... Yeah, I didn't want to like, um, you know, make either either take the type and make it super, super like condensed or, or, or make it super tiny just to fit it all in there. And so, yeah, six characters. Innate was definitely the way to go. <laughs> But um, but that's, now, that's, yeah. <laughs> um, all the way mm -hmm. uh, and now um, on your uh, on your own for uh, DJing, um, you are now innate. That is correct. Yes, that's right. Yes, cool. that's right. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
do you want to tell me a little bit about your um about your DJ history because it's um I think it's interesting a lot of people seem to start off as DJs and then and then they kind of get into production work you know then they're like ooh I really love these you know remixes I'm playing or you know you just start getting used to um, DJing and you then start wanting to like craft your own beats and make your own stuff you on the other hand are a bit of an anomaly in the sense that you're a producer and you never DJed and it's really only been recently can you can you sort of Walk us through why that is and how that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. You know, that's, that's you know. That's, that's awesome that you bring that up. Awesome that you bring that up. That's because that's it. Kind of it's a, kind of a, a unique, it's a unique uh, story. Uh, story. Um, so um, so you know, I'm a classically, classically trained pianist. pianist. Um, and that's how I got. Um, my that's how I got my start in music. Um, um, since I was, you know, since I was uh, uh, four and a half years four and a half years old. That was basically that was like that was basically that was like my childhood was classical music. Classical music. Um, and playing in piano and competitions, and recitals, recitals um, and, um, and I really, really didn't even get didn't even get a start in start in pop pop music. Pop music. I really start, I really start like, like kind of learning, kind of learning everything, everything and kind of just um, just kind of just kind of being being pop in culture pop culture until until uh, uh, when, I when I was in college. Um, you know, um, there was you know there was a few there was some I got. I definitely, I definitely got a lot of classic rock from my dad growing up. Growing up. Um, <laughs> um, but, but just kind of, just kind of finding, finding and discovering things my own things on my own. Um, I, um, I, kind of, I, yeah, kind of, I, yeah, it was kind of a late start. And so, so, but, but once I did, but once I did start listening to music and downloading things, I mean, this was kind of right around the era of like, when there are, you know, there are big, fast internet speeds and Napster was a thing, or like, I think it was like right after Napster went down when I went to college, but, you know, they, you know, they, you could do all that, you could do all that file sharing and I was downloading everything, downloading everything, listening to music. I was, I was, you know, I played, you know, I played drums in the marching band, you know, was not a marching band, not a marching band, I was the Stanford marching band. Stanford marching band, which they, you know, you know get, get drunk, drunk and run around, around like lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but it's, we called it's, it the, we called it the, uh, 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 again, again, stuff from Doug. Stuff from oh, Doug. Yeah, I'm getting stuff from um, Doug too. Bad echo. That's weird. I don't hear the echo on my bad echo. end. Bad echo. But, um, hmm. Oh, geez. That's unfortunate. How bad is it, people? Uh-oh. Echo. Really? Because there's like, there really should not be an echo. Huh. Hey, hey Nathan, talk real quick. Yeah. Hey, right? so I can hey. talk a bit. So I yeah, can talk a bit. It's bad is what everyone says. Damn. Yeah, apparently it's only on a Nate. Oh, wait a minute. I know what's going on. This is what's happening, Nathan. We're going to do this again. Mm -hmm. We're going to stop this. But mm -hmm. um, but I know it's happening. You don't have a microphone like like this, do you? And but you have but you're wearing headphones. Um, Nothing's is um, coming through your uh, is your voice coming through your computer? Oh, nope. 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 my headphones. headphones. Yeah, yeah, there's the are off. off. Damn. Well, I am sorry about that. All right, we're that's, gonna. That's we're what gonna, I'm looking at first. Uh, all right, we are gonna totally enjoy your. your <laughs> I got halfway set. Through, I got halfway Stop talking. The story Apparently, there, but... it's not working. First, Just shut up and play first, music. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna jump off, and you get you get ready. <laughs> you get, you get ready <laughs> for your right. set. All right. <laughs> all right. Oh my God! I'm sorry, people. We wanted that to Alrighty. work so well, Alrighty. and apparently it didn't. Uh, let me pop that off and move this over and hang up on poor Nate. Um, uh, 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 okay, people. So sorry about that. Um, you know, I guess it's one of these things where we, we, uh, we. We, we actually did a little bit of a tech run through several times, um, but we don't know what it necessarily sounds like out there in the internet, you know? So um, what seems like, you know, it seems like it's good to us. Although God, didn't we actually, no, that's not true. We totally did. I thought we did. Hey, you know what? I just watched a drag show on another Twitch channel. 
they're sort of in the same boat as us where it's like, oh, God, what are we going to do now? You know, um, we can't actually do parties in real life, so let's move it to Twitch. And look, this is probably like super smooth sailing compared to some of the shit show issues they were having. OK, so, um, you know, give us a break. It's our first time doing this. We're going to sort it all out. OK, my producer is uh, is texting me right now. Um, oh, oh, he's sucking up to me and says, this is going great. <laughs> Damn it. You know what? Um, but is it? But is it? Um, you know what? I'm going to take a look at, um, let me put the glasses on for maximum geek girl effect, gamer girl. Um, let's see what you guys are saying out here. Um, I'm, I'm super happy to take questions. I, I didn't mean necessarily to go on like a crazy, crazy 40 minute rant to start the show. But, um, you know, again, I reiterate, <laughs> I didn't really know what I was going to talk about. And I guess I should never, ever, ever worry about having nothing to talk about because it's mashup culture. I, and, um, I'm the queen bee of Booty Mashup. This is a brand that I helped create, uh, and I and and I've worked really hard at building a community, and and oh my god, uh, right before we you know dialed in for our ill-fated interview with DJ and Nate, um, I was talking about uh, the people uh, on my team, my DJs, my performers, um, and just really coming together and really helping. Um, it was, uh, I was, I was in a rough spot. So it was really nice to have everyone like all hands on deck. Let's, let's, let's keep something happening. And I think doing this sort of show and having this sort of channel really is going to, it's going to keep, well, I know it's going to keep me sane. I, I, I hope, I hope the rest of my team is, uh, as uh feeling the same way too because you know we're feeling it we're all in the same boat together i know you out there are also having the same you know it's like it's friday night i hope that on a friday night you are not usually sitting at your computer watching someone like me go blah 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 <laughs> but maybe you are i mean whatever whatever works for you maybe you can't get out maybe you don't live in a city that has the kind of party scene that you want uh, maybe you're just over it maybe you're you know there's you know, a zillion reasons why you do want to stay in on a Friday night. So um, we know you have choices when you sit in front of your computer or your phone on a Friday night sitting at home. And uh, I'm glad you chose us. <laughs> All right. Um, so what's going on? Uh, let's see here. Mashups changed my life and your website opened my eyes to some of the best music I've ever heard. Oh my God. Thank you. I mean, this is why we do this. It's like, we're all like, we're, we're huge fans of, like I said, it's, it's mashups is the concept, but we're ultimately huge music fans. And, um, and that's why we've been able to like stick with this. There's so many, um, there's so many producers and things that have come and gone and there's a few people in the scene that have stuck with it and I think it's because they're not necessarily you know they're not bandwagon jumpers they didn't they didn't start mashups because it was like ooh it was the cool thing or it's like oh they did this thing once and now they've moved on to you know other stuff it's like no they're like it's okay to do other stuff um, but doesn't mean you have to just stop making mashups if you you know because it's not cool and trendy anymore. I mean, let's be honest. It hasn't really been cool and trendy for a long, long time. It simply is at this point. Mashup culture, I, I say this to people all the time. I still get this question like years after the fact because when Booty started in 2003, there was, you know, um, the media buzz around mashup culture it died down in the UK, but in, the U.S. it had just started up, and so we were right there at the forefront. So we got interviewed for like every article about mashups and stuff, and um, and so there was a real media buzz, um, and it was fun to be a part of it. But then you know, uh, you know, flavor of the month, and you know, a year later, even my friends are like, "Oh, you still do those mashups?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's like saying it's like, oh, you're still breathing." <laughs> I mean, it's just part of what I love and who I am. I didn't 
we we didn't start this party and get into this scene um t- t- to be trendy or cool or or following you know or following a music trend uh did it because i was like oh my god love all this and and uh, let me clarify that does not mean that i like unequivocally love every single mashup in fact there's a lot of mashups i hate uh even better though are mashups i love created with songs i hate and then i'm like oh Oh my God, they're making me like this. I didn't realize because, you know, a mashup is often at its very base level two components. So it's either, um, it's the, you know, what do you hate more? Do you hate that vocal or do you hate that instrumental? And this, this was me for hip hop like 20 years ago, right? I was like, I thought I hated hip hop. And then I realized, no, actually, I don't hate hip hop. I like, and in some cases love, a lot of rap. I don't necessarily like the instrumentation. So when I started hearing all these mashups with rappers over music that I loved, then I started hearing the raps in totally different ways. And it was like, oh, got the flow and the rhymes and the, the lyrics, and this is really good. And I never would have been tuned into that had it not been mashed up with music that I actually already had a connection with. So mashups help me help open my mind to um, other other styles of music that I really thought that I didn't like. And that's just one of the beautiful, one of many beautiful things about mashup culture. And I'm sure as we continue doing Friday Night Live and I continue doing this mashup talk show, you're probably going to hear me say a lot of the same stuff over and over and over again. But um, every week I'm hoping, you know, It'll be different stuff. I'm realizing I barely scratched the surface on everything that I absolutely love about this crazy scene that um, that we've helped cultivate and then that we're a part of. Um, so let me just see a few more things. Friday nights, usually watching someone play video games on Twitch. Oh my God. So I figured it out today, by the way. Oh my God. Okay, so we're on Twitch. I'm watching all sorts of streams. And I'm just like, God, how is this so popular? Like... People really just sit around and watch other people play video games? And then it dawned on me. Oh, of course I don't really get this. I don't tune into it because I don't watch sports. Like, I hate sports. Um, You know, big surprise. Like, the queer tranny femme doesn't like sports. (laughs) But, you know, not to play into cliches and everything. But, yeah, there was just, like, nothing, you know, sports. (laughs) Nothing really for me, right? Um... Uh, except team colors and mascots and, and team names. I, I'm, I'm fascinated with the branding of sports teams, but, um, but I don't like sports. I think watching sports is boring. I'd rather go out and play sports than actually watch sports. And then I was like, oh, but lots of people love to watch sports. So, duh, wh- why did it take me this long to figure this out? This is why people watch other people play video games. It's just the modern equivalent of watching sports ball, you know? I was like, ah. So it's like, you know, I mean, keep in mind, there's no judgments here. It's just more like, oh, this isn't my thing. But it's like, I don't quite understand why it's other people's things. And just literally, like, an hour ago, I figured I figured this out. I'm sure you're like, duh, Adriana, you're so stupid. (laughs) You know? Anyway, um... All right, so uh, I'm gonna reiterate what DJ Time, what my, my producer, <laughs> is uh, is telling me. Um, so we've got a DJ set coming up. That's really the whole. Um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm gonna have to interview him next time and be like, so what the hell? How'd you like? I I just figured, oh, it's Friday night. We'll or whatever night we'll do DJ sets and we'll just like, you know, we'll live stream a DJ set. And then he came up with this whole thing. It's like, no, you got to do like a pre-show, like chit chat talk thing, like a podcast. And after the, afterwards I'm going to do an after hour. So I was like, okay, let's just try this out. And I'm sure this is the very first Friday night live. We have just started our Twitch channel. We are just getting started people. Cause I hate to say it. We might be, in this for the long haul um quarantine might not be three weeks or three months even we don't know so buckle in it's gonna be a bumpy ride but booty mashup is here for you (laughs) more importantly 
Actually, it's not more importantly. It's just as important. You're here for us, too. <laughs> I mean, um, this gives us an outlet. It gives us something to do. It gives us a way to share our passion with the world. Um, you know, it's so easy to just, you know, go to the club every weekend and play mashups for people right there losing their minds. And um, so this is a little different, but uh, but the passion comes from the same the same spot, um, and that is sharing this music, uh, this unique brand of music of taking different different things and putting them together and making it a big mix. Um, I, I really think that that's important in our in our culture, um, and it's uh, it's lovely to share it with everyone. So anyway, thanks for being here at the very first mashup talk. I'm going to sign off. <laughs> And what's going to happen is the channel is going to probably go to that, you know, just basic booty, uh, booty mashup slide and then DJ stick with us. Don't, don't turn away. We're going to go offline for like a minute and then we're coming back online. He's going to be logging in from Portland and throwing down an amazing three hour DJ set. Um, maybe you didn't hear what he said, but I did. And he said he's playing uplifting, uh, fun mashups to get us through these you know rough times and he's digging deep and gonna play a bunch of like you know booty classics from you know the, the kind of mashups that we used to play all the time at the club and then maybe we haven't played at the parties uh recently because we're constantly recycling new stuff um but he's gonna hit a bunch of the the classics so um anyway stick with us thank you guys so much like follow subscribe you know blah 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 all that stuff but seriously um, that button right up there, uh, I believe it's up there. Uh, click it, follow us. We'll Twitch will ding you and let let you know when we're live streaming. We're going to be doing this a lot. So thank you so much for joining us. Stick with us, DJ and Nate live on the decks, throwing down a fun, uplifting, classic booty mashup set. Mwah. Peace. <laughs>